Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm gonna call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for April 28th, 2022 to order. The time is now 7.03 p.m. Uh, there is masks and hand sanitizers at the front of the room for anybody who would like uh, one of those. Uh, we're gonna rise now for the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone please stand. The Pledge of Allegiance is the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we'll go through the minutes. Uh, we have the minutes from March 31st, 2022, Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve those. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is the minutes of the April 23rd workshop meeting, which are not done yet. So we'll table that until next month. Uh, next item is the treasurer's report. Uh, Irene. Yeah, have I have the budget up right now. Would you like me to go to the, the other report? No, no, budget is just absolutely fine. Um, nothing unusual with respect to where we are with the budget. If anyone has any specific uh, requests, please let me know if you see something. And this this um, is out on the Google Drive for anybody that would like yep, to see it. Yep. If you can scroll down to 389. Certainly. Uh, that's the only thing that is a little bit different this month than it was last month. Um, the category 389 miscellaneous revenue, and I just have to check with the accountant. That was a dividend payment from the insurance uh, company. This is something that we typically receive every year so it's nothing unusual as far as i'm concerned it's just categorizing it i just have to double check with the accountants as to where those proceeds um belong if if, you, if the accountant says that we need a new code of account right, we can right. make his motion for that exactly exactly mm -hmm. um if you scroll down to the 400s um under i guess the uh, general government uh last month i had mentioned that we were a little bit over budget with respect to costs when it comes to uh, advertising, communications, et cetera. Again, some items that are out of our control with respect to how things are priced out. So other than that, uh, scroll down to 409. Again, uh, items that are out of our control with the jump in costs in uh, all utilities, as well as our poor insulation into the building. So there was a huge jump in our gas cost, um, but there's not much we can do because we're all dealing with this. So, so there's a big insulation problem within the building. There's any other notations. Actually, the last item that just looks a little bit unusual in comparison to prior years, if you scroll to 450, And we had a jump there in recreation and culture. Was it pop up? Yep. Um, and that was the purchase for the ball fields of the Diamond Techs uh, that was uh, given to the Marion Township Community Association. And that's really about all that I've got to comment on when it comes to the uh, budget. Okay. Uh, do you want to give a quick high level on? Like we won't go through the bills or anything like that, but uh, account balances. I have it up here if you want oh, to read it off. Yeah, you go ahead and read it. Okay. So the you. current account balances, the general fund checking has $521,330.44. The general fund money market has $388,232.75. The road district checking account has $336,480.86. And the road district money market has three hundred and sixteen thousand seven hundred and seventy dollars and nineteen cents. Uh, Streetlight fund has a balance of eight thousand two hundred and forty-seven dollars and thirty-three cents for a total of one million five hundred and seventy-one thousand sixty-one dollars and fifty-seven cents. Um, anything either of you would like to cover on top of that? I don't no, think we I really mean, need to go street, through. Streetlights, we have to be careful with because again, costs have gone up so much. Mm. Over a hundred thousand dollars of the general fund money market is the ARP funds, mm. and uh, we're going to see the road district money go poof. Yeah, we're going to see as soon as we start some of the projects. We have a little bit of a buffer uh, in the general fund for some of the extra projects, but I have a feeling it's just 
by the end of the year. Yeah, I have some good yeah. news about the road stuff. Yeah, too, and, so. and we didn't have expenditures really for last year because of COVID. Yeah. So it looks like there's a lot of money there, but it's because everything came to a grinding halt. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay, next is to approve the payment of bills for April 2022. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, anyone wishing to address the board can do so by coming up to the microphone. Please clearly state your name and address and be sure to sign in on the public comments sheet. Uh, Sue, for the record, we have two people on the Zoom session. We have Brandon Sweeney and Tyler's iPhone. Okay. Floor is open for anyone that would like to do public comment. I think everybody knows who I am, but my name is Jim Donadini, spelled D-O-N-A-D-I-N-I, -N -I, and I'm at uh, 198 Street Birch Lane in Stonecroft Village. Right. I'm coming to and asking to speak with anybody, and I don't know who would have the interest, but I got two stories on how we were going to proceed with the closing of the development, and maybe only two pieces of that puzzle were here, I don't know. Um, I don't see anybody from Landmark here. But anyway, my last understanding was that the first review of- Oh, there's um, not. Oh, good, I am. good to see you. Um, uh, the initial, I was told it was the initial inspection. Is that correct, Mr. McCarthy, on the roads? I don't know what inspection you're speaking of. Was the, the was it, are you referring to the triaxle, like the load test? Yeah. yeah. You're the, talking about the inspection done in 2020? No, Jim, the, the load test with the triaxle. So that wasn't the initial inspection. That was the follow-on inspection. Okay. For the, for the load we, had, we had sent you, a, <clears throat> a, a, in fact, we gave it to your company. Uh, initial opinion of what we thought the roads needed to be. They differed with what you guys said, but your response to that was, that's an initial inspection. Correct. There'll be a follow-on inspection. Yep. And you would be invited to that. Well, there never had, well, to my knowledge, there never has been, and we were never invited, I can assure you. There was a follow-on inspection done. Okay. And we were not invited for some reason. I can't speak to that. Well, okay, just to, just to kind of play arbitrator here for a second. Um, the triaxle one was the final inspection, correct? Was the subsequent inspection. Yeah. And I know we got notice the day before, essentially after hours. It was after 5 p.m. So by the time we got it was the following morning. And that's, I believe, what was shared. Somebody would have to keep me honest on that because it wasn't me that did the forwarding. But it was shared from us to somebody in the, the Homeowners Association the morning that we had it. So it was very short notice, but we did try to communicate that out. Okay. Um, well, it, it was it's, so short notice that none of us knew Yeah, none of us knew about it. Yeah. We didn't know about it until after the fact. It's, it, so it, 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 yeah. it's getting very short for, for there being no notice mm -hmm. about a fire system that we were told was going to be done in the development that now appears doesn't need to be done because we raised the level of the pond somehow. Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, they have to dredge the pond as part of there's, the... There's a whole list of remedial work that has to be done at the pond before the phase four escrow is released. Yeah, there so was, there's... It, it was agreed so to it, three it, years ago. My point in all uh, of that is just a lot of heavy work that. Mm -hmm. that we went 10 years on a road, mm -hmm. construction road on, mm -hmm. saving the rest of the development, and now we're, we're three miles down the road and that hasn't done yet. I mean, that heavy, heavy lifting isn't done yet. Anyway, it's just a little bit confusing. It's late mm -hmm. in the game. We all should be playing with good communication and it's been terrible to date. That's, that's my point. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jim. Thank and you. We'll, we'll be doing everything that we can in our power to make sure that aside from ever, anything else that the communication does get kept up and for yeah. what it's worth, even though it wasn't us, so I, I do offer my heartfelt apologies on the, the late notice for that final yeah. test. Like I said, we didn't, we didn't know about it in a timely enough fashion that any of us could even attend. I would appreciate that. Okay. Are there any more public comments? Fred Walter, 252 Copper Beach Lane, also Stonecroft. We uh, got sort of secondhand 
a copy of the report that's the basis for how our roads are supposed to be repair roads and curbing. We took some exception to that and we received no response to the point that we've been ignored. Uh, I'm going to voice publicly that the first issue with the curbing is that when you read the development plan, And uh, it refers to the curbing to be compliant with PennDOT section 630. That references a drawing RC64M that specifically states the minimum sections that are broken have to be four foot, have to be greater than four, or cannot be less than four foot. I did a walk down of the roads to be paved and discovered 94 instances where there are sections of curbing ranging from six inches to yeah, 47. Uh, these are not labeled for replacement and have not been replaced with the current repairs going on as the contractor has been instructed. I am listening. I'm trying to pull up the full. Yeah. And you did voice those concerns also last meeting. And we, yeah. You know, uh, uh, additionally, I did a walk down of the finished roads and discovered there's 16 places where the curbs were never repaired. When the finish, when the initial, when the earlier roads were finished. So that's basically breaks in the curbing. It's within four feet of any intentionally cut saw joint, the curbing is broken. And that's a structural failure. The uh, alleged fix that we're supposed to get is the application of a sealant or caulking compound to the top of that crack, which does nothing to the structure. And in fact, the referenced uh, caulking is only applicable uh, to uh, pipe joints and prefab concrete pieces. But that's the, the excuse that that's the, the, the caulking. It does nothing for structure. So we have a problem with that part. Uh, so second area is the roads. We acknowledge that a load test was done of the roads and there was no deflection. However, when one looks at our, uh, the base course of asphalt in the roads, there are numerous cracks. The cracks being that at one point, the road deflected as it settled. And in some places, I've heard a number, three and a half inches is the amount of lift they're gonna have to put on a finished course asphalt to make up for how much the road has settled. But the, we have not gotten confirmation that all or most of the damaged base course of asphalt is going to be ripped out. There's a very small number of areas that have been marked for milling where they're going to take, a, take out that base course. I sent you another report that one of our engineers did that identified a whole bunch more areas adjacent to these areas that needed to be done. They are not in that scope of work. So, and additionally, there are other cracks in there. That does not include all the cracks, but uh, the, I think it's the Don Smith report that I sent you, uh, identified a bunch of other areas where there were significant defects. And I found it very interesting that the, the report that's the basis for not taking this up says, and I'll quote, there are areas of the base pavement that have extensive cracking and alligator in of the base pavement. It is anticipated this alligator will reflectively crack up through the wearing course. So we're, we're already mm -hmm. identifying that our finished roads are gonna have defects in a courtesy. That's the sections that we're milling out. That's yeah, as I say, if I'm remembering, the section of the mill out are being milled, are marked to be milled out. There's a lot more that. Well, that's your opinion. Okay, let's 
but uh, but that's a total misfabrication and a misstatement of what that letter yeah. says. So it's, it's, so it's, if, as well as the statement of sixty four M is incorrect. Hmm? Your your analysis of sixty four M about four foot is incorrect. Have you got a copy of it? We can look at. I no, I don't need to look at it because I know what it says. It says the curb sections have to have an expansion joint twenty feet or four, or four feet. No spacing of no more than twenty and no less than four. It says so it's not it's not talking about a crack. It's talking about sections of curbing. All the curbing in this development was done in ten foot sections. But these are cracks that do the same thing as your expansion cracks, construction joints, and you say and they are less than, than four feet. In. And, but that's a, that is not what sixty four M says. I beg to differ with you. Well, that's fine. You can beg to differ. I mean, it, it can says we, because I I don't have it. I'm trying to pull up Pub four hundred eight. And it's it's an enormous document. Yeah. So can you uh, send me the actual the the wording on that just for the sake of sake of argument? Sixty four M is a picture. Oh, it's a picture. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. A very distinct. I sent that to you in part of one of the transmissions or transmittals I sent. Okay, I must have missed it when you sent it. I'm sorry. It had um, the section six thirty, which referred to the sixty. Yeah, sixty four M. And. Uh, I've talked with other highway engineers. We brought one of our civil engineers along. I don't know if you care to speak to us. Um, but uh, the, the major concern is that we're saying that these cracks will reflect up and we have major, we're not milling out all of the defects. Yeah, the, the ones, Jim is right, if I recall that report correctly, the sections where it references reflection coming up through the new is, that's why they're being milled out. Those ones are specifically the ones that are going to be milled out for that reason. The fact that these, that the sub base material is already significantly cracked means that it has no structural strength. It's already suffered settlement from. That's your opinion, but we did a load test on it to verify that. All that said was there was no more settlement at your load test. So there was no it, failure. The sub, the sub base had failure now, four loaded tracks and would show deflection. We all agreed to that as the load test, including the HOA, and that's what was done. That does not identify the. The HOA wasn't even there. Yeah, no, we, was you didn't invite well, us. There Jim, there, there was a, well, it there were prior. It was agreed that we'd all do a walkthrough on it too, but that didn't happen because we got notification three hours before they were supposed to do it. Yeah. So. And then when we asked for them to come back and do it again, Mr. McCarthy insulted everyone in Stonecrop by telling us that we don't know what the hell we want and that he wasn't going to subject any of his staff to a lynch mob. Right. Yeah, right. I didn't say that anyone didn't know they were talking about him. That's a, that's a great way to talk about our taxpayers, by the way. We pay you, don't we? Do we pay you to do your job? Not to be insulted. You've insulted people here tonight already. You don't like being insulted. Kiss my you-know-what. Okay. Okay, we have talked with other engineers, and we are prepared to hire a separate engineer to come in and do an evaluation. Um, we have talked with them. They, they've, we've identified the concerns. We have a separate engineer ready to pull the trigger and tell them, come in and we'll do an evaluation. But I wanted to hear from the town as to whether that would be given any consideration. I'd, I'd hate to see you have to do that first, first and foremost. So what I'd like to do, and this is something we mentioned at the workshop when you were on the phone, is I'd like to get Jim out there, somebody from McCarthy Engineering, potentially Jim McCarthy himself. Well, he can't come. There's a, there's a lynch mob waiting for him. He can't go. So I wasn't sending one of my staff. I didn't say I wouldn't come. Yeah, so, so, wasn't one of my staff. so in, in, in the effort, in the effort of trying to be neutral here, trying to get the thing that we were trying to get originally, maybe not with the triaxle, because that might be difficult to line up, but having some representatives from the HOA, somebody from the board, somebody from the engineer, possibly even somebody from the attorney's office, the solicitor, somebody from the developing group to get everybody out and do a walkthrough and essentially air the things and maybe go through it. Okay. We are concerned about this. Okay, that's a legitimate one. Or no, it's not because the way that particular particular section of the contract or Pub 408 is written doesn't actually pertain to that. That's the goal is to get everybody back on the same page and hopefully, like uh, uh, what Jim had said, communicating better because I think that's probably the biggest breakdown here yep. is we want to make sure from a board standpoint, 
you guys don't get saddled with a road that you're going to have to repave in the next couple of years. Yeah, I would like to see a certification that these, the, the roads will be good for 25 years of service, which are what new roads are a nominal lifetime of. And if so Fred, just as a side note, when I talked to somebody from PennDOT a number of months back about the difference between like oil and chip versus like the hot bitumous, yeah. like the, the, the actual rolled asphalt, yeah. PennDOT's only seeing about 13 to 15 years out of a, a hot roll road right now. Yeah. That's, and that's average lifespan. Perhaps you might get a little more out of it because of the relatively low traffic of Stonecroft, but I, speaking honestly, I don't think you're going to get yeah. 25 years out of it. The, um... The engineering firm we've hired in the past that did our reserve study mm -hmm. said that based on what they saw for the design of the roads, they, they were figuring a 20, 25 year life. And that's what we budgeted in our reserve study. Yeah. My concern is that the alligatoring on the underside, and I've talked with actually PennDOT engineer who didn't want to go on record, but he said that the alligatoring is significant. And I've talked with, as I said, I have a consulting engineer available to do a report i just was trying to avoid yeah expense and the conflict yeah and i think the, the board uh, i would say i think we all kind of unanimously agree that we don't want you to have to go that route yeah. we'd much rather help you get this sorted there's certain things and this has been something that i've said repeatedly there are certain things that we do have teeth on that we we can enforce whether it's contractually or by ordinance or anything like that and we're happy to do it. We're happy to, to yeah. lend our strength wherever we can for you. But there are certain things that, like like you found out with the streetlights, we can't get involved on. So this, this certainly seems like it is something that we can help review. Yep. And to the full extent that we have, either within the plan, uh, statute with Pub 408 or anything else, we're happy to to help. Let's yeah. just get up there and clarify. Yeah. Again, what you, sent that, you sent him a, an email on Monday mm -hmm. asking exactly what you're asking for right now. Mm -hmm. And we were told that the people of Stonecroft that don't know what they want, and he wasn't going to subject anybody to a lynch mob. Consequently, I'm done being insulted and, and being talked down to. I make a motion that we terminate McCarthy Engineering and advertise for a new engineer, and they can do it. Well, let's let's discuss that. No, let's let's. That's my motion. Okay, that's it's motion. on the floor. Either second it or don't. I'm I'm not going to second it at this time. I want to I want to discuss further. And and Jim, just we'll I'll talk more about it once well, Sue says you it's can okay talk to stop. My hand. I'm done. Huh? Well, this is this is ridiculous that, that you well, know Jim. this township is run by anybody but the people who sit on this board because we can't make any decisions it's, so, it's getting so, old it's so, getting really so Jim, old. Jim, even even if we were going to replace the engineer it would not be prudent to dismiss the engineer before we have another engineer that we reviewed like not saying we're necessarily going to go that route but you don't you don't leave yourself without an engineer because yeah. there's so much that happens behind the scenes that is the attorney or the engineer on a day-to-day -day basis um we can certainly review that that's something that we do we look at professional services every year we can do it a little out of band and do it sooner than the end of the year but uh, I, I, I don't mean to offend when i say it would be a little rash is, to is this, dismiss is this another promise we make a lot of promises mm -hmm. we're very really active we just make a lot of promises so, yeah, I'll, I'll accept your promise, but I sure would like to see some action on anything, including this. Okay. So it's, it's very frustrating dealing with people who like to talk, but don't like to finish and do anything. And who like being pushed around by the higher power. I'll stick around to the end of the day, but I'm going to make a decision overnight as to whether I want to even continue to serve in this board. Okay. Fred, do you have any further comment? Uh, I would like a an estimate of what kind of life we can expect out of the roads if they are patched and your current plan. Because already we are seeing in finished roads, the alligator cracking, reflecting up through the, the wearing course. Now we have a program of sealing, but again, sealing some of the road where we'd have to seal the entire road. I think that's going a little bit beyond normal maintenance. And I would like, what is your estimate, sir, of what kind of life we can expect out of 
sweet birch in particular, the road surface has been hammered. When we just put another inch and a half lift of wearing force on top of all this cracking stuff, crack stuff. I didn't design the roads, it's not my purview to give you an estimate of road life. Typically, the roads will be turned over for municipal dedication. There's a, be a requirement of 18 month maintenance plan to ensure the roads were intact for an 18 month period under the MPC. Do we do we have any or does the, the homeowners association you, you probably don't know that jim but is What's that you, don't, you probably don't know the answer to that but is there anything in place like that with the hoa i don't know i believe andy was going to look at that but he's been unavailable yeah. he was yeah. going to check that from the original developers room to see if there was an 18 months maintenance bond i don't know if isaac knows that yeah because i mean in, it, in the grand scheme of things a year and a half isn't a huge amount of time but it would certainly if there was a substantial problem it would show through and in, in, in that time frame it's difficult to say. I'm not a civil engineer. Yeah. What, from your experience as a civil engineer, uh, what would your expectation be of the road service surviving? Mm -hmm. the, uh, the fact that you have failures now, the fact that you have failures now, and you have cracking and not the demonstrates clearly without any further study. Subgrade has failed and has failed for one of the reasons or both. It wasn't designed correctly, but it wasn't built correctly. Once the subgrade goes, everything above it goes. And that's what's happening right now. So all you're doing is taking good asphalt, running it across the top of a failed subgrade. And that is going to just continue to crack until eventually, fortunately, I don't think I'll live long enough to see it. But in years, the road will disintegrate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 40 plus 50 years. 47. Okay. <laughs> Like Jim said, our office can do a further review. Andy, unfortunately, couldn't be here for mm -hmm. medical follow-up, so I, I don't want to speak for him, but we'll I'll make sure that happens in the yeah. next week. Well, there is bond money that uh, mm -hmm. I know Landmark is trying to retrieve. Now, if you, you know, you could roll that into the 18 months that you just delay paying that out, but I still don't think that that's giving us some roads that are going to have anywhere near a new road life, and yeah. that's the goal of this, uh, that these roads have a new year, new life. Is that not, sir? That's your, that's your goal. Would you say it or not? It should be on. Our, our, yeah. goal is to, our goal is we can only follow what's on the approved plan and what's asked for. That's what we're governed by the MPC. Yeah. As to the, verify whether the things were installed according to the proposed plan. That's Are, the, are you saying that you are not going to produce a finished road that has a full life i'm not building the road landmarks building the road well i would assume the plan calls for a finished road the plan calls for the details of the cross section of the road that's been that's mm -hmm. so far been built and will be built and, at least and, in phase four where we've seen it and and the base course that's all cracked and that has no structural strength left it's your opinion what that's your opinion that's our opinion okay so um I think the only way we're going to get another opinion is hire another engineer. And if the town, if uh, Stonecroft needs to do that, um, I just want that that opinion is receives the same credible evaluation. I mean, it's obvious I'm not going to get anywhere with Mr. McCarthy. Yeah, I'm I'm not an engineer, so I I have to take some of that with. The, the professional expertise. So if you had a report, and I, again, I hate to see you have to go that route, but if you had a report, I would absolutely, and I think Irene and, and certainly Jim would would entertain the report coming in from somebody that is actually, not, not underscoring the other gentleman, but so an actual the engineer. That they have to pay someone to come in and do what we already know. Well, Jim, I would, I would also recommend that there be a sit down meeting with Jim currently somebody from the HOA, maybe if the developer is willing to come to the meeting and a representative from the board, I think that will allow yes. a more detailed conversation yeah. than 
yeah. what's going on here. Cause the reality is I think you'll be able to have the ability to look at things and our office would be happy to participate in that as well. And we can adequately prepare for that because I apologize. Andy isn't here this evening. So I don't want to be speaking on his behalf. Our concern is that there's a clock ticking mm -hmm. in mid May, this final paving is supposed to be done. And I'm hearing that uh, we're only doing things according to the present report and we're not going to change anything. So uh, I'm not sure that leaves us in any position to say or do much, but- uh, uh, is, it Stone, is, is your group willing to delay the paving until June to give this topic more time to be yeah, discussed? Yeah, I talked to ownership and get back to you guys on that. I, mean, I believe so. I think that would take I the pressure off of the timeline I, I and give more time so. for everyone to get together. Our payment guy as well. I mean, schedules are tight when it comes to paving. Um, yeah, but but I, I I will I will uh, I, I will talk to them and, and see if, if they can meet to this. Yeah, I I think uh, if that's I, I, I would ask how I mean, what to the extent or what are we talking about delaying? I mean, delaying for next year. No, 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 no. Like June. It's old June to give at least another month so that we can look at this again. Yeah, again. And it's a question of if I have to hire another engineer to come in to provide a different opinion um, and resolve all that. that if, if that's doable, that would be appreciated, I think, by all parties involved. I think that, and I will call our contractor and, and, and verify that. Yeah, I think, I think they're, they're really good. Okay. Yeah, I you, you, thank you very much, Fred. Like no, thank you. Yes. Okay, then I will make I'll communicate that with Andy. And I'm assuming you prefer Andy rather than someone else at all. I mean, Andy, Andy would be great. Yes, sir. I, I didn't sign in, but this, this raises a couple of questions in my mind. Okay. Um, can you come up here yeah, and say yeah. your name? Thank you. Yep. Mark McCord, 295 Sweet Birds Lane, Stone Cold. I'll sign in here. Thank you. Yep. Uh, he said he could back and ask, what if they say no? What does that do for us in our position? And several of your answers were, I, that's your opinion. You have no opinion on some of the things that Fred commented on or made statements on. I mean, I would think you'd have some kind we've of already issued. We've already issued a report with our opinion. You already issued a report and to the Board of Supervisors. Yeah. So you guys all got his report then <laughs> from what I'm understanding? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Isaac, what's the likelihood that you'll be able to push this to June without? I mean, I know you still have to get confirmation, but is this 50 50, 90 10? No, it's, it's, it's a very good likelihood. I mean, I, like I said, first, I just said what we're talking about pushing to save next year. I would rather not. I mean, we can right. work. No, I, and I understand. I know it's so far. I mean, landmarks right. wants to finish up. I mean, I, that's I, just yeah, common sense. You'll commit to I pushing it to the minimum of June. So possibly June sometime. And uh, I, I know there's a little bit of flexibility with our paper schedule. Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I know Landmark wants to get moving on. I understand that. They're in business to be in yeah. business. Yeah. And the other question was, if if it does come to getting an outside engineering firm, what if what happens if they come back totally different? Well, if they come back totally different, we will we will look at that and we'll stare at the plan and make sure that if yeah. there is a differing of opinion that whichever one has the best grounding in like the publication 408 is going to be the, the one that the board tries to push on. And that would be just... That would be the three of us. The three of you making that decision. Correct. Okay. And you have, uh, I guess, they no idea until and if we yeah. get an independent firm coming in. Essentially. So just because they're employed now... They have no extra weight or anything. If somebody else comes in no. with a different opinion, right. you know, okay, we got an issue here. Yeah. We got to decide. Yes. We, we want to clearly, I guess, see mm. and understand what the discrepancies are. It's one thing to receive a report. It's another thing to hear from you guys. Honestly, I think the best thing is to physically walk through with everyone, see what's going on so that we understand it, make sure we have the proper information with respect to what the requirements are for all these repairs. So once I understand that and see it for myself, I'll be able to give a much better opinion on the whole subject. Agreed. And like I said before, I'm, I'm not an engineer. So when we have things like this, I have to defer to things like the report. Hey, look, you're like me. I'm yeah. dumb as, right. as a rock when it comes to this. Yeah. There's just some things that I hear 
this don't make sense mm -hmm. to me when I hear certain things. And that's what I just want to make sure of that we're not saddled with yeah. a bunch of, yeah. you know, expenses mm -hmm. that should have been taken care of before landmark. And that is out of our development and it's up to us then to maintain. Yeah. I, I think all of us wholeheartedly agree. And with I think that. you would be and the same. Oh, yeah. All absolutely. Of you, if you live there, you won't want to be saddled with those extra expenses either. If in fact, they should have been taken care of ahead of time. Agreed. All right. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank, you. thank you. Any other public comments at this time? Okay, seeing none, we'll move into the items for discussion. Uh, first item on the agenda is the Marion Township Community Association Car Show. This is scheduled for Saturday, May the 14th at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, I will be working on getting the volunteer fire police in place. At the workshop meeting, a motion was made to close Main Street from Canal Road to Richland uh, with Church Road open one way northbound only. Close the entrance to 422 westbound, including the alley uh, at Twilight Acres from their, their property line onto uh, Main Street, as well as Marion Drive and any of the alleys along 422. Motion was made to allow the parking at the township building, the parking lot, and the playground ball field. Parking was also uh, granted permission to the community association at the Reeds Church, as well as handicapped parking at Twilight Acres. Uh, so I am in the process of drawing that up and putting the signage and everything. We did motion for the road closures, but I'm going to get something that, Sue, you have as a reference point, and uh, Kelly, since you're here for the community association, uh, that way you guys have it as a cheat sheet for, for setting that up. But we talked with Don on Saturday about that, and we all agreed that that's the best uh, flow of traffic to be able to keep people moving in one direction and out one direction. Okay, uh, do you guys have any questions on that? I know we talked about it at length on Saturday. Um, any of these saw horses and things that we have, we are going to be letting the community association use. And uh, I'll actually, I'll make a motion to we didn't tell you, we didn't tell you right over that today. Okay, good. So, uh, came before on Friday, I came here that day, mm. the church had something. Uh, but uh, I'll give it to him, I'll give him the stuff Friday before, and he wants me to sign the paper. Yeah, he quickly mm -hmm. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd also like to make a motion to allow any uh, parties on the road crew to, uh, I'll say, volunteer their time. But the township would use it as road crew time to assist with the, the setup or the coverage of the event. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Agenda item number two, we actually, okay. yes, um, yes. Yeah, session, yes. Bring up some other items. Oh, please, please. Okay, the yard sale is scheduled for Saturday, June 4th. Um, I have been approached about opening the history and alumni list. I said I would bring that to the board tonight. Do we have people that would be able to be upstairs in those rooms? Yes. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. Do you guys have a problem with it? No. Nope. Clean it up. Okay. Did, did you ask yeah. Jane about yeah, cleaning right. or whoever? Because they always clean up there it's first. Karen and Jane that are interested. Okay. 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 Yeah. So there's a dust and yeah. There's a little bit of tidying up that has to be done up there because of like nobody going up there normally. But I, I I'll, I'll make a motion to allow the the opening of the history and alumni rooms on June fourth for the yard sale. Yes. Wait, 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 no, oh, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay, go ahead. Is there a safety issue with the ceiling up there? um not particularly it, it falls down every once in a while but it's not like it's <laughs> it's, it's uh i think i think at this point what's going to yeah I, I was just about to say that so i think everything that's going to yeah what what's going to fall down has already fallen down so i don't think you have a, a hard hat situation or anything like that um that does maybe lead itself into one of the other agenda items later in the evening though yes my other question would be 
if, and that's a if, mm. if they are interested in having a history in the alumni room open at the June picnic on June 26th, would that be okay too? I don't know their availability and if that is their plan, but I would just like to know if that's a possibility. I don't have a problem with it. I don't know. As long yeah. as the room's clean. Right. Yeah, I can I can open yeah. doors as long as we have somebody physically here with the stuff, right. and uh, that's really the big concern. Okay. So I'll make a motion to uh, per the volunteer availability, allow the community, uh, his, the alumni in the history rooms to be open on June twenty sixth for the, the community picnic. I'll second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Just as the obligatory plug, the community association is also selling sandwiches this year. How much are they this year, Kelly? Seven fifty. Uh, they go to a good cause, and Justino's has very good sandwiches. So you should, uh, if you have the opportunity, see Kelly or one of the other community association members to to support that. Uh, moving on to number two, which was something we covered extensively in public comment, the Stonecroft Village. The proof loading was done with a triaxle loaded with 23 tons of stones. Uh, this was done on both sides of Loganberry Court and Sweet Birch Lane, uh, and there were no visible movement or uh, heaving that would indicate failure of the sub base during that test. Um, there are areas of base pavement that have extensive cracking and alligatoring. Uh, it is anticipated that this would reflect through if it was not milled out. Carthy Engineering recommends the areas previously marked and the areas around utilities and driveways to be milled four inches, tack coated, and then a, have a new four inch of sub base, then tack coat, and then a wearing core supplied. Um, on the same day, the slant curbing was inspected on the roads that needed a uh, wearing course. Some areas of cracks and minor damage have, that have, would have been saw cut along the crack and, or excuse me, some areas of cracks and minor damage have been saw cut along the crack and crack sealed with concrete curb caulking. Uh, some areas have been patched with a concrete patching compound. McCarthy Engineering recommended following PennDOT criteria that any section of curb that is cracked or chipped can be saw cut and sealed with epoxy. There is uh, more than one crack in a 10-foot section. That whole section must be removed and replaced. On April 18th, McCarthy Engineering marked approximately 495 linear feet of curbing that would be replaced and 12 areas that would have to be saw cut and then caulked and patched. Uh, Landmark has started removing um, the rock construction entrance. I believe they actually finished that, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and they're going to be replacing that with topsoil and seed. Um, anybody from like Landmark is, am I right? Did you guys finish removing the construction? Yes, okay. Uh, topsoil, it, I don't believe yet. It's seed or it's on the schedule. Uh, or schedule. Yeah, it's the walking grab so you're going to be able to do that. Okay. If I can ask, with the, the pond, like the, the work that has to be done on the pond and any of the other still active construction actions. Um, how are you planning on big, bringing in the big equipment if it's not going through the construction entrance? Yeah, it is, it, we don't feel that there's going to be uh, any heavy equipment at this point outside of the construction entrance. Okay. Uh, the, the repairs that need to be done to the pond as we have any contact with them, uh, that there's any heavy equipment that's Okay, so we, we've moved past the bulldozers and front end loaders, and you're into the more of the pickup truck kind of space of things. Okay. Can you enlighten us on your agenda on the rest of the work that needs done? Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's an extensive list, and it's going to be really tough for me to sit here and talk. Oh, no, you, you, I don't think Jim means right this second. Would you can be able to send? Can you yeah. send that to us, please? Yeah. We, we appreciate it. Thank you. Fred? Uh, I don't see how you wouldn't consider dump trucks full of asphalt paving not to be heavy. That's what we're going to bring in. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know, if they're going to be paving on the road, they'd have a pretty a pretty short distance to traverse to get to there, though. And that... so bear with me. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously, we have, to, we have to do our curb repair by paving. Mm -hmm. So in order to do our curb repair, we have to get rid of the construction entrance because we have to replace the curb out uh, at the side of the street. Yeah. So we can't, it's, we have to pave. It's, it's kind of a chicken chicken egg sort of scenario. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and and our goal, just to reiterate, is to meet with the HOA engineer attorney 
and walk through and see what items are in dispute and to obtain a clear understanding of what needs to be done. I have a question for the gentleman behind me. Where do we stand on the infiltration base? Uh, at, at this point, uh, the, the infiltration base is as uh, so obviously we're working with the conservation district. Um, we were directed to uh, leave the, the valve at the infiltration basin open uh, and let the grass and, and, and let the grass come up and get a good stand of grass to close the valve here uh, sometime. Which would then entail heavy equipment, not cutting out of the no, it's not heavy equipment. That's the story is not heavy equipment. It is just minor repairs to minor changes to the outlet structure. It is not heavy equipment. It's yeah. not the purpose of the infiltration base was to prevent water from flowing into the pond to prevent water from overflowing into the creek. I, I can't speak to that. This is, this is prior to my time. I just, the, the, purpose, the purpose of the infiltration is because the MPDS permit is fired and the, end, the, the requirements on the old MPDS and the new MPDS permit changed the location prior to the winter. That is the, that is the basis for what we're talking about. Oh, it's a CCD thing. Okay. Yeah, we can talk okay. to Dean. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, that I'm not sure. I, I'll have to be back in a second. I'm not sure. Some significant balance that were worse than sweet birch. Yeah, and, and I, know, I, I did not walk that, uh, but I, I can't say. Um, so I just sort of the we'll, we'll get there. Work on your list and make sure it was Sorry, Matt. Okay. Okay. Uh, do we have anything else that we want to cover on the Stone Crawford Road stuff? I'm sure we could probably devote an entire meeting to that, but for the purposes yeah. of what what's here and what we've already covered, do we have anything else? I ask you one more question, if you don't mind. Certainly, that. certainly, sir. Uh, uh, at, at a meeting at, we had at our HOA, I was under the understanding that. A fully loaded cement truck was going to drive over the cracks to see if there was any movement or anything. I'm pretty sure a fully loaded cement truck is more than 23 tons. I might be wrong. Somebody can tell me that. Uh, you know, then I'll I'll basically shut up. But I thought a, a fully loaded cement truck you're going to be pushing close to 70 or 80 thousand. And I think when you read something, you said it was 23 tons. It was 23 tons, so it would be 46 thousand versus. What I'm assuming, and I said, I don't know for sure, but a fully loaded cement truck, I think is going to weigh more than 46 tons. So I just Googled it. The, the truck is loaded with 23 tons of material. So it's, that's 23 tons plus the truck. Yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. The average weight of a fully loaded cement truck is 66,000 pounds. So it'd be 33 tons. But that's, that, that's, no, that's actually, that's including the truck. Including the truck. So it's so probably. Is not including the truck. Yeah, the correct. twenty-three is not including the truck. So you're you, you probably are right. It's a little more weight, but we're not we're not talking an astronomical difference. Okay, no, I, but I, I thought I remembered. I thought I remembered that. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving into the next item on the agenda, uh, amending the budget, we made a motion at the workshop meeting to add the engineering services code of accounts, uh, which is four hundred eight, which will allow us to improve uh, how we're tracking certain expenses and, and incomes. Uh, I don't think there's anything we really have to touch more on that. That's just a, a housekeeping thing. Uh, next is the Main Street Traffic Study. This was performed for stop signs at Church and Main, Water and Main, and Sharp and Main by Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, we have received the report. Uh, the engineer and the attorney are. No, no, no. Uh, hold on, sir. That one. No, don't do it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, they're they're actively reviewing that, and their their comments will be to us next month for the workshop meeting. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll give everybody a, a second here to filter out. Thank you for coming tonight, by the way. Excuse us. Thank you for yes. that. No, no, no. We'll try to get it to where we don't have to do management. Here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah no. keep, keep an eye out for the, the contact about the meeting, please.
Okay, uh, next up on the agenda is the culvert at Reichert Road. Uh, we have received several quotes for the box culvert. Uh, unfortunately, none of them participate in CoStars. So at uh, the Saturday workshop meeting, we made a motion to put this out to bid. Uh, so Jim, are you, are you able to get that out on depend bid? Is that you just want to bid uh, buying it for uh, delivering? Right? Correct. Correct. And that was that was in that note that I had sent was getting right, that I just wanted to make yeah. sure that it was just delivery, not lifting. They're just going to, whoever we're going to have here is going to pick it off the trailer when it gets here. I mean, because normally the contractor, that's what I just wanted to clarify yeah. that tonight. So that's, that's actually, that's a, a, an interesting point. Do we want to have them place? Because I mean, otherwise we're going to have to run a crane probably. Yeah. Well, they're not going to, for, for it to be placed, it will be a contractor bidding it. Uh, okay. The, the precast suppliers, Delivered here on the truck and offloading it is the contractors. Okay. Yeah. So we. we well, I, I was talking to Ryan Paul Power on Saturday. Uh, he's going to help us if uh, <laughs> uh, he's going to have to get a private contractor. Yeah. yeah. Ryan is on the road crew. Yeah, so if, if we can uh, if we can get it here. He, he was saying just to get the material, it would be five to seven trailer loads. Yeah. Here. And, oh, yeah. and they have to schedule the train at the same time. Mm -hmm. we, we have to have the, the ditch, the yeah, train we have, is set in. Yep. <laughs> so if we can get it here, we can rent the crane and everything. So I would say just, just the materials and the delivery. Okay. And that would just be for Riker. Because yes, yeah. at Rikert, the culvert at Rikert. I thought it was if you're going to plan to do any other ones this year. I don't know if you are. That's what I was so thinking. The, Sheridan is ready to collapse. So yeah, the, Sheridan is starting to open at the end. So that actually leads to another point because so, I don't want necessarily want to order something that's extremely costly and then have it sit in the parking lot if we don't get the permits. Um, there is going to be a pretty long lead time, though, to get the stuff. Like everywhere, there's long lead times for everything from uh, house front doors to uh, computer oh, yeah. electronics. Um, Chardon, for example, we've received, we received the phone call from the Outer Space District. The permit's ready to issue once we okay. get the clearance of the bog cover from Fish and Wildlife. Are we going to get that sometime soon, do you think? It's, it's Fish and okay. Wildlife. You know, in the next two months, probably, okay. two months, probably yes. Okay. It's so not going to be a year to get it. It's I, I don't have it immediately in front of me. Do you have the, the cost figures for if we wanted to put out Sheridan to bid? I don't have it, but my thought was if you wanted to put out them as, a, as an alternate. You could bid the base bid. You could put the base bid as okay. the Riker Road comfort. Yeah. You could, just trying to save the advertising yeah. costs and all those costs. Um, put them out as that is the base bid, and the alternates being another one, or, you know, whatever you're planning on doing. Okay. Then so when it came time, you know, because we're talking about the bid, and all it's probably going to be awarded at your June meeting. Mm -hmm. You probably have a permit by then. Okay. Um, so and it doesn't really cost anymore to include the other one in the bid. Yeah. Do we want to include the other two in the bid as as option one and option two? Yes. Because I mean, we're we're going to use it. And like I said, other than it sitting around in the parking lot, yes. there's not really a detriment to that. It's only a matter of time before the permits come back. Yes. So okay. So I, I think. And you could stipulate when you know, for example, say if can we stick? You want one of them, you know, and I don't know what their lead times, but you'd want one in October, September of this year. You'd want the other one in March of next year and the following one in October of next year. You could put that right in there, your anticipated. Um, See, I don't know what, I don't know what you guys think. I said, uh, I, from the time we order the, the box culvert, it's going to take ah, four months. Right. So I, I'd We're about say, 12 to 18 weeks right now. Yeah, I'd say let's just get the three of them. And if we have to store it, we have to store it. But that gives us the ability, assuming we can, we have the ability to to work certain times of the year, because I know there's a blackout period. Um, but that would give us, like, if the permit comes in, I can turn Butch and the road crew loose on, on doing that right away. So I'd say advertise for the three. So we advertise for Riker and Sheridan. Yeah. yeah. And then Mary and the North of School. Right. Mary North of School. That's good. Yep, they never cashed that prior BCCD check from September. So I, well, that, that, yeah. was, that was submitted so, with the September. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. and I just sent yeah. a new one. No, there was no application for the There's no fee for the well, What was that for? He said, write the check. Remember? He was here. He was like, I need the check. I need the check today. And I'm like, it has to go to meeting. So I have to go look back again. I don't remember. Oh, this is so frustrating. 
and I just wrote another check to BCCB. And you and I were like, why didn't they cash the other check? Now you think you said your one was too old, right? You're only 90 days, your text. But they never part. told us that they did or didn't do anything with it. They didn't cash it, but they never gave we responded to an email or anything to say what they're doing with it. So it's sitting on someone's desk somewhere. At BCC yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for, it was for the permits. They're for the gen for the permits for their culverts. Yeah, they yeah. have yes, an the they have an application for it. Okay, okay. It's just like why it, we were so pressured to get that check as soon as possible, and, and it's yeah. yeah, it's not been cashed. Okay, yeah, hmm. yeah. And I just sent a new check. I'm assuming for one of these for the Marion uh, Drive folder. Yeah, too cold. Yeah, because I wrote it on. The check. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's talk to them. They had they had a, a fair amount of turnover in the admin okay. position up there. Okay. The check is two still years. it's over six months at this point, so mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's not valid. So okay. Thank you. So do you want to make a motion? I do. I absolutely do. I would like to make a motion to advertise the other two uh, culvert. Say, say what they are, not other two. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, culvert uh, at Marion Drive North of School Road by Oscar Manbeck and the culvert on Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover uh, to go out to, to bid along with the culvert at Reichert, Reichert. Reichert Road. Thank you. Um, as options. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Irene, second. No. I call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Motion carried. Okay. Uh, good news is the culvert at uh, Marion Drive. We had put that in for a uh, dirt and gravel low volume road grant. Uh, they have agreed to fund this at 50%. Uh, they haven't agreed to. Oh, well, they, no. they made the offer. No, no. They, they reached out for me to check with the supervisor. They didn't have the money to fund it in full. And they said, would the township proceed with the project if they funded it 50%? Okay. But so, they, they haven't had their meeting to okay. vote on any of the projects. Yet. Good good to know. So Thank I had to go back to them and say, yes, the township, because they didn't want to give half and the project not proceed. Yeah. And then they didn't award the money. Yeah, no, we'll, so, we're, we're interested in I let them know that uh, as soon as you let me know. Yeah. So okay. that's going in front of their, well, um, they call their QEV board, but it's a dirt and gravel road board mm. at their May meeting. Okay, good. So we'll, we'll stick tight on that one. But the good news on that is whether we do it or BCC does it, it's roughly the same price. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not any any net increase. It's actually a couple thousand dollars less than ourselves okay. with the 50% the grant. You made a motion on Saturday to accept that 50%. Yeah, if uh, we can so obviously accept it. No, I just... No. We, okay. Yeah. We, no, we, I just needed to let them know that if they only give us fifty percent, if we were going to reject it or not. Yeah. So I mean, that's what they wanted to know because they. We'll take yeah, it. We'll, we'll take they, it. Well, they've had they've had municipalities that they can yeah. only fund half, and mm -hmm. they awarded it to them, and they said, "Well, we don't really have to build it," and then they didn't give their funds out in the time. Yeah. yeah. No, we we can certainly do it, and I think from a motion standpoint, it still holds true. Yeah. We've we've accepted it. Whenever they say it's okay, it's yeah. already yeah. locked and loaded. Okay, uh, also on the road projects for 2022, obviously <laughs> culverts are gonna be a big component of that. Uh, we did receive the uh, line painting, uh, the Berks County Cooperative Purchasing Line Painting Sheet. Um, we got that a couple of weeks ago. I need to sit down and just based on the, the cost of line painting, figure out how many linear feet fit in the budget. And we're gonna do as much as we physically possibly can along with whatever they skipped out on last year, like the crosswalks. Um, Butch, I know you had talked to, I think it was like <laughs> Bill Koch. <laughs> The guy, I guess the main guy, uh, uh, it's called Pan. Uh, he said, uh, when the weather breaks, uh, which is, I think, is just about broken down, yeah. <laughs> uh, they're going to do the line painting. So, so the ones that didn't get done in fall, so if uh, we can give them more work soon, that we can. I'll have that done shortly. Uh, I think. Uh, We'll get the line done. Okay, and I'll have you stay on top of that with them very closely because I, I came out, I took a day off of work and they started doing the yellow lines and they marked for the crosswalks and then they just never came back, yeah. um, which was more than a little bit frustrating. So 
Sure yeah, that yeah. that's on the that was on the list that they were supposed to do last yeah, year. That's on the list. Yeah. Yeah, I, I took that to heart when you spoke up about that, Kelly. It certainly needs it. And there's a lot of areas that we're just going to get into the habit of. There's a lot of places where it's really bad, but we want to get into the habit of just doing like a quadrant, like a fourth of the township every year. I know they painted it on the stop project, and that's that's already chipping. So. Yeah, it's it's hard to keep paint on roads anymore. Terrible. Yeah, the new paint's just awful. Uh, the, the new paint's rough and like just putting road salt and stuff on the roads just does awful things to, to paint. Um, also kind of a segue for, for good news there. Uh, we did get a, a load of cold patch. Okay. So Butch and the road crew are going to be going out Saturday starting to patch and we're going to be picking up another load uh, probably in the next couple of weeks once they make the next batch. What was that? We don't have a roller, Jim. I mean, we can look at them. They're very, very expensive pieces of equipment. You, whatever, you got to do what you got to do. If you're putting cold patch in and it doesn't last, buy the equipment and do it right the first time. Okay. Uh, patch, you're going to have to use any stuff. Yeah, the warm mix, you have to use the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh -oh. I'll, yeah, I'll look yeah. in. I'll Turn look out to somebody that can do it. Then. There's no sense in us continuing to repair roads and then have them fail in a very short period of time because we're not doing them right. It's money. It's, it's money, Tim. Like the, 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 a lot of the roads, and this is something that we've talked about before, a lot of the roads don't have the right grading. They don't have the right base. So like School Road is a prime example. You can continue putting lift after lift after lift on that. But the bottom line is the road itself is functionally deficient and it has to be completely ripped out and put in and that's the last estimate we got was close to half a million dollars a mile at the at the workshop meeting i suggested if everyone can take a look at uh department of transportation website there are we can chase some grants right there's grants and there's loan programs we just have to figure out what we're going to do what it's going to be worthwhile what the cost is because i know you, you saw the numbers earlier on an average year we're looking at six hundred thousand dollar budget that's it. That's money coming in, money going out. The money that we have sitting in there basically is is it's essentially it's, two years of, of money not being spent because a more than that. right of, of waiting for permits and everything coming to grinding halt. Plus the hundred thousand dollars from the um, the ARP funds. So it looks as if there's a ton of money in there, but it's not. All all of these culverts, all the money that's in in the road district fund is going to get eaten up, and we're probably going to have to go into the general fund for that as well. Yeah, just the culverts alone, if you don't consider the, the VCCD funding at all, it's it's, it's about it's about three hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars just for the culverts. So all that money goes poof, plus there's less money coming into the road district fund because there's less money from like the fuels because less people drove, et cetera, et cetera. It it's just this trickle down effect. So again, it's being being prudent with the money that we have and trying to plan for the future because unfortunately we're in this pickle because of what people it's, it's the same thing with the building right. it's been a it's been a yeah. compounding problem that has just accumulated over time and unfortunately yep. we're at kind of a breaking point with that yep. we are. i would love to just absolutely go gonzo and say let's well, get contractors and then repay every road from start to finish but the, the money just isn't, isn't there. there yeah we could get warm mix that's what like butch and jim mccarthy were saying but we have to use it like right away like it's not a situation where it can sit and there are certain concerns about having to get like depending on what what it is we might not have the tool to be able to to apply it in a way that it's going to actually stick yeah. so there's a little bit of research that we have to do to see like do we need a roller how much is a roller is it a roller that we can put on the back of the tractor is it a um, that we could rent? It, exactly so we need to do a little looking on that but for the time being the cold patch is I don't want they, to say they the, just started making cold patch this year now. Like I think probably the low June. They, uh, the guy at the conference uh, beginning of the week told me they, they made the first batch in February. Oh, uh, well, that's not what New Enterprise told me. Well, that's, that's uh, they, they were up, they were out there at first. Okay. And, uh, and uh, on Saturday, they're going to make a, a first batch again. Okay. 
but back back to that point the cold patch is really the most cost effective quickest thing to be able to to get stuff down on the roads right now in the state that we're in it's it's like the um the tarring and chipping it's not perfect for everything but in a lot of cases it's a good way to get serviceability out of a road that's having a problem exactly i'm sure i'm sure if we get some hot hot patch or whatever you call it uh, you can roll it and recall. yeah please find out what you can yeah and say so look then... look and see what it'd be to rent or to buy yeah. one because i mean if we if we bought it if it's not awfully expensive we'd certainly use the crap out of it yeah you know, we have a trailer hall, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. Please, please find out where you can. Yeah. yeah. You, and you still have to take me on the grand tour. Yeah. So you just need challenge. to do exactly what you suggested previously and putting the township kind of on a schedule as mm -hmm. to what roads need to get done and, and looking for more funding options, which will lead us to agenda item number eight. <laughs> Okay, I'm moving on to agenda item number eight, uh, getting additional office staff. Uh, we're looking to potentially get a, a part-time secretary. Uh, we need to formally create the position, set the wage, the number of hours, get a job description, and advertise it. Uh, at last month's meeting, a motion was made to move the treasurer's desk over yep. into the other room there to serve as a, an office in that capacity, and to move the filing cabinets over into the office. Um, I had suggested on Saturday setting a wage of $17 an hour for approximately 16 to 20 hours a week worth of work. And uh, Andy uh, Kozlov stat will be providing a sample job description from one of the other municipalities yeah. that recently hired yeah. a role. Yeah, and um, I could probably pull her to start to get a job description too, because I know they have an assistant secretary also. And PSAT really had nothing, did they? Yeah. Um, I did look on, on, on Indeed today, and yeah. there was a Topton Borough Okay. Assistant secretary. Okay. Thing. I mean, it's a little bit different than what we would need, but so we can know, take so that information, tweak it. We were waiting for you to be back in the office, mm -hmm. and we could do that. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess well, most were hired um, late July, I think last year. Yeah. If you reach out to Nick, their borough manager, they'll probably ask what they use. I think that's know? what Andy was going to yeah. do. Yeah, Rob is only done. I don't. I yes, they did. But yeah. I know. I know Nick, the borough manager over there, would be happy to share. Oh, that's okay. great. Perfect. This way. Perfect. And and you said there was a lot of success with them. It was it Andy? Lisa from Rosemary yeah. said they had a lot. Yeah, of success. Lot of, um, yeah. As far as moving the desk mm -hmm. over, I need a computer. Yeah. Um, I, so yeah. I'm personally of the opinion that if I hire somebody who needs some help, yeah. then I can file. Yeah. So yeah. Well, have we, some free time. we wanted we want to give you the time to do that, but we also want to take. So that you have to go the room to file. Well, somebody's going to have to sit in there. Well, no, 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 we'd be putting, just we'd be a putting, big desk. yeah. So we're going to be the computer. I know, but you need to have a computer. Just a big wooden desk. So you're going to still have a chair there and the screens of the computer. Okay. So just okay, I think you missed my point. If yeah. you give me help, yeah. I can file and get that stuff out of there. Yeah. But yeah. I don't have the time right yeah. now. That yeah. is the so issue. Where the big desk is, that could be uh, your file cabinets that you need too. Okay. So we want to give okay. you the space and the person yeah. to, okay. to get through if that. If you give me the person, I can make the space. Okay. okay. I can get the filings okay. out of okay. there. Okay. That's that's the I issue. Mean, okay. As soon as, no, that's okay. As soon as we get the computer, um, then we're going. Okay. What was that? Sure. Nothing gets done. We talk about it every month, but nothing ever gets done. I'm going to help with some of the Job description. I mean, I'm I'm okay with making you can a, motion. Make a motion to advertise at least. Yeah. Okay. And then when you guys have workshop, if you already conducted interviews or anything. Then... Well, I mean, Jim, if you want some action, make a motion to advertise it. Do we want to make a motion to set the wage to create the position, to set the wage, and to set the hours? That's something that is within the power to do. It. Okay. I I will make a motion to create a position of assistant secretary. At a rate of seventeen dollars an hour for around sixteen to twenty hours a week. Uh, 
and advertise. I was going to do that separately, but yeah, we can do that and to advertise it. Um, Courtney, do I have to specify where we're advertising or just that we're advertising it? I see this feels is appropriate. I would just give her the discretion. Okay, at the secretary's discretion. Okay. Thank you. If indeed's not working out after a week, letter the folks and everybody posts on Facebook jobs and all that. Yeah, okay, cool. Second. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Okay. Next item on the agenda is office equipment. A uh, motion was made at the workshop meeting to purchase two twenty-four inch I've got to turn the receipt over, but they're um, as well as I think Jim's mic is dying. That's yeah, why it's crackling. Is... Yeah, I think that I think the mic is dying. Um, if it gets too bad, I'll go get the batteries. Right there's battery. Oh, it's your battery. Oh, okay, cool. Can I finish up that? Second? Yes. Okay. So at the workshop meeting, we did purchase two 24 inch computer screens for a total of $264.96 and two wireless keyboards and mice from uh, the Logitech MK270 for $20 each plus tax. Again, that's with the goal of getting. I'm sorry. 28, not 20. Excuse me, $28 each plus tax. And that's to get the desk out of there, to get me over into the other <clears> room. <throat> so that frees up space for Sue and whoever else is going to assist her with daily activities. And then we will need, if we're going to move this in yeah. to there, we will need to replace that. But I got to get a price figure okay. on that. Okay. So then I'm good to go yeah. with everything. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. When we move the desk over, I'll make sure yeah. that we have. Yeah. Internet over well, there. For yeah. You. Once once the screens come in, then mm -hmm. whenever you have the time available. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is the road crew continuing education courses and policy, uh, the PennDOT local technical assistance program, LTAP. Wait, uh, wait, which looked up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this offers virtual and in person classes throughout the year. Uh, we talked at the workshop about uh, asking the road crew to, to attend a couple of these throughout the course yeah. of the year. I did scan this into the items for tonight. Cool. This is the year long. Thing oh, that's Delta. great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the goal of this is to keep everyone up to date with best practices. And um, I have to look at it a little bit more closely. There's web, there's uh, webinars. Is that some correct? of them are in person and some of them are um, virtual. Virtual. Mm -hmm. And so the goal is to get you guys just maybe to do about five or six of these classes throughout the year. We figured we post the um, schedule here so you take a look if it's something as simple as us setting up the computer you can watch it in here that's fine again just to keep up with best practices i'm always surprised even in, in, in my job i've been in medicine for over 20 years there's always something new to learn there's always something to improve there's always new equipment new procedure etc so it's just to keep everyone familiar we'd ask that our our, our road crew guys come in and, and take a look at that if they want to attend an in-person class that's fine as well but we want to have set the goal of at least five, if not six classes a year that everyone just kind of attends. Okay. Next is the Act 537. Uh, the SEO has started doing inspections in the Northwest District. Uh, just to reiterate, as we did the last time, Tim Wagner's response from the DEP uh, basically summed up that everyone needs to do the septic inspections. No one can be excluded. Uh, the next step is the income study. Uh, I was talking to Colleen Terry, and she is referring me over to uh, a gentleman uh, uh, named Joe Baldos. Um, I think it's Baldos. 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 Um, he was supposed to call me at some point this week. I haven't heard from him yet, but we still have Friday. And if not, I'll reach back out to Colleen. Uh, he specializes specifically in income studies around cost feasibility for a project of this, this nature, as well as the cost feasibility of the ongoing uh I'll say subscription cost to such a project, which is exactly what we want. And we'll also then be able to use that same income study for uh, certain grant applications that we're looking at. So keeping that moving along, but uh, it just hasn't meshed up where I got connected to the right person yet. I did meet, I think it was two weeks ago. It was the week before the, the workshop meeting. I did meet with Colleen and her team and we talked about things and that's where the referral to this other gentleman came okay. from. And that's going to be very useful when it comes to other uh, yes. applications other kinds of grants too even things like the road grants uh, i'm certainly sure that that would help cross my fingers 
Okay. The next item on the agenda is the holding tank ordinance and agreements. The you got that that I folded at the workshop meeting. You got that email, but I still yeah, it. I, I got it. Um, it's on my phone. It's it doesn't look like it's too far out of beyond what some of the other stuff in the Act Five Thirty Seven calls for. Have to have a, a plot plan showing where the the holding tank is installed. It's really not much different than installing a new septic system. Okay. Um, you have to have a permit for the holding tank. Uh, it has to be inspected on an annual basis, which yep. is what does differ right. from right. Uh, and, a septic and system. Alan's the one who brought that to our attention. Yeah. So. Yeah, I I don't have a problem with the ordinance, and then the agreement. Let me pull up the agreement here. Um, Really, just to agree. Agree to the terms of the the ordinance, more or less. They usually they usually contain some deadlines. Yeah, like I see one here that the yeah. it's section three permission to use the proposed holding tank shall automatically expire on this particular one is twelve thirty one twenty sixteen unless the township grants an extension of time. So I don't know if either of you got a chance to look through that at length, but I, I don't have any principal objections to either the ordinance or the agreement. And correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe this is something we have to do. Um, I think technically speaking, yes. I yeah, think technically speaking, yeah. yes. Um, and it's always advised. I don't I don't know if the frequency is mandated at once. Uh, I think Act works. 537. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. Act 537. I mean, Alan would honestly know better than me for yeah. me to go and look that up. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost, but, yeah, almost positive. If, if I'll double check, if you'd like, we'll double check it. If, the, if doing it less frequently is something you guys are interested in. I mean, no. I think, because like I said, I remember reading this particular section in Act 537 that the, the holding tanks are just pretty much it's really? annual no matter what. Yeah, then just maybe yeah. there's nothing else we, can, we would amend yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, it's yearly. Yeah. Year, thank you. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't, the, it's solid ordinance. Mm -hmm. It's, it's we need to simple. It gets to the board. point yes. and the agreements. Yeah. So, so what we need to do is we need to have, uh, we need to authorize Coswell of Stout to prepare our holding tank ordinance so that we can adopt it and advertise it and all that fun stuff. Yeah, we agree. And we already have the ordinance. The format, the ordinance is that that's currently in there is the same. Is yours? Oh, it's okay. Okay, I apologize. I thought that it's was from two thousand and four. Uh, there we go. Okay, it's just so, not been enforced. Okay, so then exactly. we got it. perfect. Oh, okay, okay. I I thought we didn't I, have it at all. I was, I was with that. Yeah, we yeah. have it. So you've had yeah. it since two thousand and four. It's okay. my understanding that it hasn't been enforced okay. so um, uh, ever. Yeah. Well, so I mean, well, that's something. Like, <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. Okay, so now well, what Alan goes we don't know where to have most of them then are in the town. Now we're gonna find out. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so now it's gonna be the one to say you have a holding tank. This is what um this is the agreement. This is the agreement. And so I guess within all of this I, I'm not sure if you the tracking of data, is Alan gonna be giving us that information so that we could be sending out the agreement, or is Alan gonna be uh, giving them the agreement. I think we should hand out on the agreement when he finds somebody with holding well, tank. Well, that agreement that we had attached was for a commercial property with the goal to for them to sewer. connect to uh, the public sewer, sewer yeah. system. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we need a new agreement then for residential properties. Probably. Well, I I'm not sure if a an agreement is necessary unless the goal. If the, the ordinance kind of does what you need, okay. I think the extra step of having an agreement, if you're not setting some sort of deadline for doing something extra outside of the ordinance, more paperwork, okay. the ordinance okay. does what we need to. And again, that, that form agreement that I'm looking at had the goal of that commercial property connecting to public sewer, which for commercial properties is ideal. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if we don't need the agreement, I'd say let's 
Well, he made it sound like he did. I mean, okay. he made it sound so like he did. So I, I would defer to the, the attorney on that one. If they say we don't actually need the agreement, then let's. You, uh, you definitely need an agreement anytime you're dealing with like a proposed, I mean, anytime you're the planning commission, you're needed to start talking about sewage. Yeah. Okay. Poop is important, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, the current, the current one, you have to have an agreement to get the permit, but I, for entering, for getting the license hauler approved, but so if you that that's something, agreement. that's where I'm seeing the yeah. agreement, but so it's I, not so for if, like an annual agreement. Oh, yeah. Okay. So if we, if we were to take out section five on the one that's in the packet, that's the one that has the stipulation about uh, a time period to connect to a municipal service. I think the rest of that holds true unless we want to take out section three about the you know shall yeah. automatically expire i think that i'm not sure if that form agreement was prepared from us considering it i mean it's 2016 i don't remember but i can look to see okay. if we can just send you a word out from that. okay yeah if yeah, not my secretary is very talented in converting okay yeah i like i said I, if oh, we have to do the agreement okay. let's do the oh, agreement but I'm, I thought we didn't have the ordinance, so yeah. that's that's it. That saves a step. Okay. So now I will get to discover who has holding tank time and how compliant. So is he going to keep a schedule of who has a holding tank in the next year? Yeah. Well, he yeah. should. That's part, of, that's, that's part of the whole on lot management component yeah. that we pay him for. So he should, absolutely should. Yeah. Yeah. So for tracking the data has been. It's cumbersome, but it's, yeah, it's workable. It's okay. Yeah, like all potential be in the system. So it's just a matter of clicking and typing, and it pops right up on the screen. So it's easier to manage. So, so when someone calls in and say, "Oh, well, I say, yes, I have a Oh, it's the speaker. Okay. Yeah, it comes across yeah, on the Zoom. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to look and see what I'll have to see what that is. Okay. 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 So nothing further on that. Last item on the agenda is resolution 2022-4, which is authorizing the expenditure of ARPA funds. Irene, I'll turn it over to you about that. Well, we have a question. Does that mean the total sum? Is that yep. correct? We have it. So, but we haven't received those funds yet. Um, the so we can we can adopt the resolution authorizing expenditure when that we get it. Okay. Um, because the amount is less than a certain threshold, right? You have a lot. You have, don't have to decide as much and report as if you are a large municipality that receives more. So okay. um, it's a relatively simple resolution. It does give you a lot more flexibility than originally anticipated okay. under the, the legislation. Yeah. So that's the good news: is you're not having the same level of reporting that was anticipated. Mm -hmm. um, that saves time, it saves our time, your time. So um, you will need to file some reports occasionally, but yes. it's that that's already been done because we did not have any expenditures and it was due. But it's you due will you will have to do it. So this yeah, authorizes sure. the chairperson um, or vice treasurer chairperson or our township secretary Probably. to deal with it. Okay, yeah. so Maybe that's the. the that's the purpose of the resolution. It would be resolution 2024 and it's prepared for you guys to sign excellent okay. approval. Make a motion so, to yep, adopt I'd it. like to make a motion to adopt resolution 2022-4 authorizing the expenditure of the ARPA funds. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, that's the last item on the agenda. And in terms of supervisors' comments, uh, I'll quickly review the police report. Uh, relatively standard month, not too much out of line. There were four citations that were issued, one non-traffic citation, uh, a number of security checks, there were 45 of them, and uh, a couple of EMS fire advisories. Otherwise, nothing really out of sorts. Um, 
The other thing that I wanted to bring up is uh, at some point during the course of next week, we need to hang the no parking signs for the street sweeping as well as the car show. Um, anybody who has the, the inclination to volunteer or if you can Shanghai one of your kids into helping Irene, mm -hmm. um, it's uh, just us going loose with a, a staple gun, preferably I'll, I'll, I'll find some of my wire tack ones so they're easier to take out, um, but stapling up the, the two signs at regular intervals along Main Street. Tell me one where. Okay. Uh, that's all in terms of comments that I have because we already covered the MTCA stuff earlier. I read. Nothing further. I just need you guys to take a look. I know we had discussed this at an earlier meeting. I'll look that's that over. The reconciliation report and Aikens uh, wanted us to do a bit more review of all the data that's coming through. So you had suggested to create mm -hmm. just a this was done. And so um, I need you guys to take a look at that. I'll do that before we go. Yeah. Assistant treasurer can also take a look at it too. He left already, so okay. Nothing uh, further. Jim, do you have any comments? I noticed that we got a report from Kraft again about property maintenance issues. Every one of those letters states that they have 31 days or 30 days to comply. I would suggest that from now on, on day 32, they get sent to the magistrate. Because this idea of now just generating another one next month and giving them another 30 days and giving them another 30 days, they're obviously not going to do it unless we flex our muscles. So send it to the magistrate, let them pay a fine if they don't want to clean it up. And then on day 32 of next month, send, send them to the magistrate. And if we get them to the magistrate enough times, eventually they'll either clean it up or we will get a judge to allow us to go clean it up and send them to this idea of just telling people month after month after month after month, we're threatening you to clean that up and then not doing anything, they don't care. Okay. I, I mean, I don't object to that under the course of if they are <laughs> making progress. Like if it's a, let's, let's use one property and as example, if there's noticeable progress, if it's not something that necessarily can be done start to finish in 31 days, I don't think we should send somebody to the magistrate. But to your point, Jim, if there's somebody that does literally nothing, absolutely. Day 31, day 32, whatever it is, send it to the magistrate and just and keep doing send, that. Why are we sending them? Why do we send the letters if we don't intend to ever enforce it? Well, some of them, we obviously we have. Uh, oh, yeah, they tell you that they're working on it. Yeah, they're working on it. They've been working on it. So most of these people have been working on it now for two, two years that I've been on this board. And I still haven't seen them cleaned up. Okay. I mean, if you, so, you want to make a motion, Jim, I'll, I'll support it. But I would like to make a motion that from now on, if people don't want to comply with our request to clean up their properties, we enforce the law that we have on the books and send them to the magistrate on day 32. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Craft does routine follow up with their with their uh, notices. Yeah, and a couple a couple of properties have been the bad apples of it, but there have been plenty of properties that have cleaned up expediently. And there are a couple like the one out on Charming Forge. There's a forge of Charming Forge. Or that one that one looked like a yard sale exploded before, and it's it's not perfect now, but it is much no, better. It's, bad it's gotten bad again. Okay, it got a well, lot better, and now it's. As I say, I'll, I'll redact that statement because for a while there, it had huge improvement. Like it looked much I better. Agree with you. Most people, when you ask ask for their cooperation, they'll give it to you. But we have a rash of them that mm -hmm. we all know about. Yeah, that we send these out, we send them a notice every month. And craft goes every month. And we pay craft to go every month. We're, we're throwing money away. No sense sending them there. Nothing changed. So we can we can have them. It's time to enforce it. If we we can't just say we're going to do. You can't make threats and not follow them up. Don't threaten somebody if you don't intend to ever follow it up. They'll just laugh in your face. And that's what's happening with our ordinance right now. Just a few people. These few people are never going to clean it up unless we. Take some additional action. Yeah, I mean, even for, we obviously don't want to play favoritism of any kind here, but people that are routine and repeat offenders, then we absolutely can leverage the extent of what's in the ordinance and the code differently than if it's somebody the first time that, hey, you got long weeds or something like that. I hate to see us be that draconian about it. But I agree with you. There are a, a rash of people that don't seem to be taking it seriously. I don't even know if that's draconian. 
when you cite somebody for a, for a problem or your neighbors have been discussed with you, and you give them 30 days, mm -hmm. High weeds? You can't you can't run your lawnmower in the next thirty days. And well, I, I, somebody to run it. Maybe, maybe that's a bad example. But what I'm saying though is like there are some people where maybe they got cited for like junk in the backyard, and it might take more than thirty days. Like it might be somebody who's a retired person or something. There there are sometimes yes, extenuating sure. circumstances. Yes, they should have thought about that before they started taking junk in the backyard. It would take longer than thirty days. Mm -hmm. I mean, One man's stuff. treasure is another man's junk. It, it happens, but I I agree with you that we probably should switch off of the olive branch a little bit onto just a plain old stick for some people. So, um, beyond beyond that, do you have any comments, Jim? Okay, Courtney, do you have any comments? No, nice to see you. It's very nice to Please see you sign. too. We will, we will absolutely sign that resolution. Uh, Jim McCarthy. I think we covered everything. Okay, thank you. Sue. Um, just I want to say thank you to Irene for holding things together when I was out of the office. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Irene. No, no. But that's okay. all. Okay. Uh, be before we adjourn, gentleman in the front had, had something that he wanted to say or ask. Good evening. My name is Eric Nelson. And I'm a combat veteran, and I'm tax exempt from taxes. And I got two tax bills in the mail. For the same property. For the same property. Let me sewer let me call yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a resident for 15 years at 151. Main Street. And 15 years ago, when I got my exemption, I met everyone on the board at that time and they agreed. And then they asked me if I would be willing to pay for the lighting. And I said yes. So every year for 15 years, I've been paying the light. So I got a bill for just the lighting. Yeah. And then I got another bill for the lighting and the sewer. Mm -hmm. Now I would think that somebody should have called me or wrote me a letter or something. Yes, you should have received a letter with the second one. There was no letter. Yeah, but yes, you should have received a yeah. letter with the one that yeah. said has sewer on it from you received a letter from the county yeah because that was a county mistake it was it a county a, error yeah, it wasn't us it was the county okay so do i owe fifty dollars or not yes yeah. that is for your septic system okay but it's, inspection. Wait, wait a minute it's coming to me in the form of the tax mm -hmm. yeah I'm taxed as well, it's actually a levy. Yeah, as I say, techni lives. technically it's a levy, but it's on the tax bill. It's not actually a tax. It's to pay for the program. That's that not the way I read it. It's your call. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's not even. Oop, no, thank you. Um, look at that, Kelly. Um, it, it's not so much a tax in the same way that the streetlights is. It's every year by state law, whether you're tax exempt or not, your system at your house has to be, or I shouldn't say every year, um, at, at varying intervals, depending on if you have an on lot like sand mound or septic system or, or a tank. One of the things we were talking about is the tanks have to be inspected annually. Um, regardless of any tax exempt status, you're subject to that requirement, not much different than anybody else. Where is that written? It's part of the Act 537. It is it is a statute that... And an ordinance was yeah. adopted several months yeah. ago. Yeah. Or, or prior to year end. 2019. It's 2019. Yeah. But re regardless of tax-exempt status, if you have an, an on-lot system in your home, it has to be inspected periodically by state law. And that's fifty dollars. So the cost of the program is fifty dollars, and that covers the uh, the tracking of the program, mailings that we have to send out, the tax bill related things, and this the SEO to actually physically come out and do the inspection. Um, you may have a situation where if you have a, a, a decent system and it doesn't need any work, and it's just you living by yourself. I don't know what the situation is. I have it, a, an eighteen year old son. My wife 
died of cancer a couple of years ago. I'm so, sorry to hear that. So I am, I went from two incomes to one, which made mm -hmm. things worse mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, uh, understood, understood. So but when I got this, I hit the fan, uh, the second bill, and I didn't get a letter. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Yes, the county so, so the county, because everyone everyone should have gotten a letter. The county yeah. sent a letter with that second yeah. mailing. So, so Kelly, Kelly Kelly said, said if you'd like to, if you'd like to the letter. One, yeah, because there was an error in the printing. I think I think his yeah. concern isn't about the yeah. error in the printing. The it's about the fifty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Again, whether tax exempt or not, if you have a septic system, state law does require us to have it inspected and. If, Welcome after 15 years of me living there. It's, this is the first time. No, nobody enforced it previously, and we're under uh, Jim. What is that actually technically called in the state that we're in right now with DEP? Where order if, if we, well, it's, order. yeah, it's a consent order. Thank you. Um, where if we don't start complying with that, they're going to fine us $300 a day. <coughs> so we're trying to come current with a law that has just not been enforced by prior board members. <laughs> okay. Um, can I give this to somebody? It has to be yeah. sent into the tax collector. I went, yes, last night to yeah. the tax collector. And she wrote on here <clears throat> that she cannot accept it. Did you try to pay only the streetlight component of it? Okay. So that's that's why. So I do you, Eileen, do you have a check written out for the correct amount? Yeah, if you have a check written out, yeah, as I say, we can we can do get that check written out for the correct amount, including the fifty dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I will give that to her. You're my witness. Yeah, so say, we we will I'll make call sure that the tax collector tomorrow morning and give that to them. Yeah, we'll we'll help okay. you with taking care of that. And then but... you'll get a receipt. I'll have her mail one. Yeah, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Seeing no other items on the agenda, I'll make a motion to adjourn. The time is now eight thirty-nine p.m. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Motion carried. Meeting adjourned.